Good morning and good afternoon, folks. Hi, my name is J.D. Rivella with Autonet Dealer Solutions. Uh, we're in Kamloops and we're brought, we are broadcasting live from coast to coast, bringing you our continuing series of live webinars designed for automotive dealers. We have opened up the chat lines for you. Uh, we will try to answer your questions throughout the presentation, but if we don't, we will send you replies electronically at the end of the presentation. Being respectful of everybody's busy schedules, our presentation today will be approximately 30 minutes. One final item before we get started. Immediately upon the conclusion, we'll be sending out our one-minute questionnaire, which is completely anonymous, and we would really appreciate if you take the time less than a minute of your schedule just to give us your very important feedback. Today's topic, the importance of video marketing, uh, to be presented, this very important topic, we have brought in a special guest, Peter Cameron Inglis, President, CEO, and Producer of Mastermind Studios. He will be arming you with insights and expert techniques and tips that you can implement immediately at your dealership. Welcome, Peter. Thanks, J.D. Hi, everybody. Uh, so yeah, today we're going to focus. Uh, it's it's great to be back here at uh, at uh, AutoNet Dealer Solutions. I've been a uh, uh, been away for quite some time, and it's great to see some of the changes and some of the new faces here. Uh, we're going to get started with talking about uh, basically web video tips for automotive sales, and the focus today is primarily going to be on YouTube and how it relates to using video within in automotive dealership inventory. Um, so I pretty much covered off that slide, um, so we will carry on and get started here. So the first thing is to ask, why use video in the first place? And my answer to that, quite simply, is video marketing works. It provides your automotive dealership with a differentiation, especially today, uh, considering that most dealers are not using video in their inventory. It gives your dealership the opportunity here to really stand out from the crowd and give consumers what they're looking for. Consumers today are looking for that social media approach that conveys trust and that builds relationships. And this is an awesome opportunity to do that. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, it allows you to build recognition uh, and obviously provide some knowledge-rich content for your website visitors. So let's drill down into a couple of quick statistics before we get into the actual tips themselves. We'll start off with a couple of stats from 2013 and then we're going to go into some 2014 stats. Uh, according to Google Insight in 2013, 61% of vehicle shoppers researched with online video. That was one in four watching at least an hour or more. And of all ad formats, online video in 2013 was the number one for deriving consideration among shoppers. Over half of all internet shoppers in 2013 uh, watched 30 minutes or more of video per month. Uh, if we carry on, so who's watching? These stats now are from 2014. Of all the internet users who watch online video, we've broken it down here by sex, age, and income. So that is to say, um, those who watch video online, uh, 65 percent, uh, let me, 65 percent of males online watch video online or use video, 57 percent of females. Uh, for age demographics, uh, the highest is obviously the 18 to 29 demographic at 78 percent of them online that are using video actively, but even with the 50 plus crowd, we find that almost half are relying on video. Uh, with incomes, it's interesting to note that the higher the income, the more pervasive video is in those uh, viewers' uh, research. Video attracts and converts, and it drives traffic. It's the bottom line. Video attracts three times as many monthly visitors to your website. It doubles their time on your website, and it increases organic traffic search engine results by 157%. So why does video work? Well, you just have to think about it and remember when you've listened or seen or watched various things online, 
to, to do and to do the math with me. Basically, what we hear, we can retain generally about 20% of it and reiterate it back to people. In the case of what we see, it's 30%. But when we see and hear things, we have a tendency to retain about 70% of that material. So video is the obvious tool for, uh, for dealerships to use. So first tip, YouTube video tip number one, and the focus here will be with respect to YouTube, especially with regards to using it for your inventory. Before we can start uh, uh, getting people watching the videos themselves and getting into the content of the video, it's important to note that uh, we've got to get them to click on the video in the first place. And that's where custom thumbnails come in. Now, in the case of YouTube, what you will need to do when you set up a YouTube channel is you'll need to get that channel verified. Um, and there's two levels of verification that you need to go through. Once you've done the verification on your YouTube channel uh, to confirm that you're actually a, a real live human being and that you've set it up properly, um, then Google will add the feature or Google YouTube will add the feature of allowing you to use custom thumbnails. This is really important. Generally with YouTube, they will automatically select two or three uh, individual um, points within the video timeline and invariably 99.9% .9 of the time it's never the picture that you want as your thumbnail. So what do you want as your thumbnail? You want, now these, this information here on this slide is, is actually from um, YouTube's playbook themselves from research that they've done and they've identified that faces especially ones expressing emotion work best. Uh, the use of bright col contrasting colors also has a dramatic impact on whether people are going to click on that thumbnail and carry through. And don't forget also to include your brand and add text if needed. In the top right hand corner here, I'm just going to zoom in on this particular slide. This, this thumbnail itself was one that was used by WestJet. We've probably all seen it uh, quite a number of times and one of the reasons uh, YouTube has determined that it got so many click-throughs was not just the content itself, but also the expression and, and what was being conveyed in the expression on someone's face. Our brains are hardwired to look and make eye contact with people. So inevitably, that is what it drives people to click through and, and pay attention to, uh, to these thumbnails. I'm um, just going to go back here. Um, Here's an example of actually adding um, uh, a brand uh, into the thumbnail itself. Uh, with your thumbnails, you can just use a simple graphics editing program uh, and grab a, um, a screen capture of a, just by hitting print screen on your keyboard, um, and then just add your logo to the bottom left or bottom right, whatever it is. Uh, you can actually even do that in YouTube uh, by actually having it as a layer in YouTube through the editor um, and, uh, and actually having it, rather than being embedded in your video, you can actually have it on top as a top layer as well. Uh, come out, and then the last example here just shows text being used to draw attention uh, to a particular topic or subject matter. So let's go on to video tip number two. This is a real quick one, but a very important one. I, I've lost count of the number of clients uh, that I've had over the last couple of years that have produced videos and put them on their websites and started getting them out there and, and getting traffic, uh, you know, to their uh, watching them, getting their getting their counts up, only to find that uh, a person or persons that were in the video uh, no longer wanted to be in the video and they wanted it to, to be removed. And regrettably, in some cases, some of these clients had not gotten performance releases from those individuals. So, if you do not have, if you are intending to do uh, some videos and embed them in your websites, and you do not have a performance release, uh, please feel free to contact AutoNet Dealer Solutions, and they'll make one available to you. And uh, and my understanding uh, is that it's been completely vetted from a legal perspective to work in Canada. And we'll carry on to video tip number three. How long should your video be? Well, 
what it comes down to, again, just like with thumbnails, is we want to motivate viewers to click through. And when we're watching video, or even before we watch it, when we see the video there, we can see how long the video is. And so generally, it's good to keep your video down at about two minutes or less. Uh, inevitably, you want to leave your viewers wanting more uh, and having a reason to come into the dealership, to contact the dealership. You basically want to wet their whistle uh, and, uh, and give them an appetite for the particular vehicle uh, that you're doing a walk around or a demo for. Um, you want to leave the video uh, feeling like it's shorter than it actually is. And number four, um, with respect to the videos themselves, uh, it's assumed that you're going to be recording most of the content for your walk-arounds using just a simple camera system, a smartphone or something of that nature. But I'd like to point out it's probably a really good idea to have some pre professionally produced commercial bumpers done for your dealership that can be attached to all of the videos that you do uh, for both the intro as well as the ending. Uh, your intro should be about five to seven seconds just to simply establish your brand. Uh, and the ending um, shouldn't be anything more than about 15 seconds. It'll reinforce the, the trust, the connection to the dealership itself. Um, it'll brand that video for your dealership and it gives you an opportunity to have a bit of a call to action at the end. Uh, one really useful tip uh, or sub tip of number four here is Try your hand at using what is called annotations in YouTube. It gives you the ability, when you have verified your YouTube account, uh, to add text and links within the video that are clickable by the consumer. Um, you, again, you've got to verify your website, that second level of verification, uh, with YouTube. Uh, but once you've done that, those annotations can be very powerful in taking a viewer of the video to the next step and actually giving them a link or something within the video that they can click on to carry forward and uh, request a test drive uh, or or submit a request um, whatever it is that you want to draw their attention to and you can drive them right to an online form that's on your website whatever page it is that you want so long as the page is on your website once you've verified the account, you can use annotations to link directly to any page in your website, including online forms uh, or a specific form for that specific vehicle. Uh, also, for that ending, um, uh, that end bumper, you could try your hand at having uh, a couple of really short, maybe three uh, short um, little testimonial clips something that consumers are saying so that when people are watching this demo, this walk around, they're also hearing from people just like themselves who have had a good buying experience from your dealership. It helps to again reinforce that trust uh, that your dealership is, is trying to build with the public while building that relationship with that individual. Um, these custom bumpers, if you're going to have them professionally produced, can be provided to you, uh, whether no matter who is producing it for you, uh, in a format that you can upload yourself into YouTube. And then using the YouTube editor in YouTube itself, you're able to attach these bumpers to every video that you produce using your smartphone or your camcorder or your professional video camera. Uh, don't forget, however, that these bumpers also take up seconds of your video. So if you've got a five second intro and a 15 second ending, there's 20 seconds, so now if we're going to try to keep everything to two minutes, you're going to be sitting out at about a minute and 40 of content that you're going to record and create. So let's carry on to tip number five. Really, really important. The videos that are the most popular on YouTube and some of the other video sites really come down to people being authentic and being real. Um, it's important that when you're recording these videos of the walk around, the demos, whatever it is that you're showing the consumers, for you to be a real person. Relax, smile, act natural, and just have fun with it. Consumers, it, it, remember, consumers aren't just shopping for a vehicle. They're actually shopping for the right dealership, and they're shopping for the right salesperson. 
And so the way that you come across is really important. If you're trying to memorize all of the points that you're trying to say or use a teleprompter or read it off a piece of paper, you're going to come across scripted. You're going to come across possibly attempting to be slick but failing. And, uh, and you're not going to come across as very authentic. Um, instead, I would suggest that you have three to five talking points. Just keep it simple and relaxed. Speak to the camera like you're speaking to a real person. Um, talk to those three to five talking points and just connect with people on a real basis. Uh, and then, of course, it goes without saying, make sure you thank your viewer at the end. Tip number six. It's similar to number five, but separate. Uh, focus on providing unique and valuable information in a friendly and caring way. Think about the viewer asking questions like, so what? Who cares? Why should I care? What's in it for me? Uh, we all have those thoughts. Very few of us necessarily say them out loud. We think them uh, behind the scenes. But if you can address those in the video itself, focus in on the, the unique things about that vehicle that you want to portray in those three to five points um, and that you want to feature. Um, can you get the viewer themselves uh, imagining about owning that vehicle? Uh, and perhaps describe the way that the vehicle is making you personally feel so that you can connect on a personal level with the people that are watching your video. Tip number seven. Film it yourself, but do it right. Um, I don't know how many times I've seen people filming with their cell phones pointing straight up into the sky, and when they upload it, there's all the black space on the left-hand side, all the black space on the right-hand side, and nobody can really make out what's in the tiny picture in the middle. Turn your camera on the side if it's a smartphone and film it landscape. Do not film it portrait. Um, that way when people maximize and go full screen, they get the full benefit, just like watching television without all the wasted space on the left and right. Um, use the rule of thirds when framing and com uh, composing your video that is filming it. Um, you can see that we've divided this picture uh, with the gentleman and the, and the mountains in the background into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. And we have him lined up on the right-hand side vertical with his eyes uh, situated across the top horizontal line and, and, uh, and sectioned through on that right-hand side line. You could do it on the left or the right, but have your subject facing towards the center of the video, no matter which side you're, you're framing it on, and frame it so that you're focused on those intersection points, like we've shown in the, uh, in the picture there. That will make for good composition, and it will also make for you to be able to see uh, the vehicle uh, or whatever it is that you're featuring over on the other side. Um, I can't say enough about the importance of quality sound. If you've got the camera on a tripod uh, or someone's holding it for you and you're five or ten feet away, uh, all they're going to hear is the wind blowing you know, across the dealership parking lot and they're not going to really be able to hear you speak unless you yell. Better yet, put on a Bluetooth headset uh, or run a wireless lab. You can get them for smartphones. Um, invest a few dollars into a simple audio recording device so that your smartphone or your camera is going to pick up good quality sound off of a lapel microphone. It will make all of the difference in the world in your videos being enjoyable and viewable uh, in a way that's going to really benefit consumers. Also equally important is good lighting. Really important to not have your light uh, source uh, behind uh, you when you're being filmed so that the camera is facing into the light and your face is completely shadowed. You want to have a good light source behind the camera shining on the subject matter and the person that's being interviewed. Um, I know it sounds really simple and you probably would do that anyways, but there's lots of people that have made the mistake of not doing that and then whatever they're filming comes across dark and sinister and uh, not necessarily, pardon the pun, in the best light. Uh, lastly, Important to, uh, if you can, use a tripod so that you don't get that shake. Uh, you can actually get tripod holders for, uh, for
for cell phones uh, or clamps for cell phones that will clamp onto a tripod or a light stand. Uh, or, at the very least, have someone else hold the camera rather than you holding it and trying to film an entire walk around video as though you're doing a selfie. Um, it will come across much, much better if you, uh, if you go through the extra effort of having a tripod or someone hold the camera for you. Tip number eight, don't overproduce and over edit your video. Remember that consumers are looking for that grassroots, just authentic walk around of the vehicle. When I say that consumers are looking for it, I've got a little bit of proof here that I'll show you as well. Um, we're in, in Kamloops, uh, a beautiful town out here in, uh, in Western Canada, in British Columbia, uh, and it's a population of about 90,000 people, so much smaller than most of the cities that you're all in. Uh, but even here, uh, one of my clients, Kamloops Harley-Davidson, I've chosen uh, an automotive, sorry, a, uh, uh, a motorcycle dealership here as opposed to an automotive dealership. Uh, because I didn't want to pick on any particular franchise. So I've got Camus Harley-Davidson here. You'll notice that even with their walk-around video on the left-hand side in the bottom left-hand corner here, we've got, or we had, before it went underneath, we had 25,531 views on this walk-around, and they're very, very simple. You can get these kind of results as well. If I, I'm just not going to play this for long, but I'll play it just shortly. You'll see, it's really, really simple. Nothing special, but over 20,000 views makes anybody stand up and take notice. So, just to reiterate, as far as overproducing and over-editing, you want to keep it simple and authentic. Uh, viewers aren't looking for a commercial. They're looking to see what you're like, what the dealership's like, and what that particular vehicle is like. Um, and you're just giving them a simple demo, like you would be in person. A small handheld camcorder or a smartphone is more than enough to accomplish this, especially if you've got those professional bumpers produced that you're going to stitch on afterwards using YouTube. Um, if you have to do any editing, Something as simple as iMovie or Premiere Elements, Elements is more than enough uh, for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money on the editing side. Um, like I said, you want to keep it fairly grassroots and simple. Um, and if you are going to do any editing cuts, uh, try to keep them to a minimum so that you don't get that whole max headroom effect with you know the head on the left, now the head's on the right, right in the middle of a sentence. Um, it's best just to find a start point and an end point um, and not do any editing in between. That way no one is assuming that you're trying to edit out things that you shouldn't have said or anything like that. Just keep it simple uh, and, uh, and straightforward. Tip number nine. Really important to optimize your videos. You've gone through all of this work to get these videos done and to get them onto YouTube. Now we need to drive traffic to them and drive that traffic back to your website, not just embedding it on your website. So, some people aren't aware, so I'll make them aware now, that uh, your YouTube videos can be search engine optimized as well. Things like title, description, keywords in YouTube, they're called tags, are very important as they've always been with web pages and things like that. But it's also important to go into um, the advanced tab when you're editing the settings of the video once you've uploaded it and edit your location, your category, and the date of recording because they all come into play into the search engine results as well. And then finally, closed caption editing is a must. YouTube will automatically close caption everything that is said in the video. But that doesn't mean that it gets indexed by Google and by YouTube with regards to search engine results. Um, Indexing on YouTube is not triggered until you actually go in and manually edit the closed captioning, correcting all of the mistakes that the system was not accurate enough to pick up. And there will be quite a few, but when you go in and change the words to what they actually should be, and you hit save and publish again, that will then be indexed along with the title, the description, and the keywords, not only for YouTube search results, but also for um, for Google search results and Google video search results. So very important that you do the closed captioning on your videos. 
in order to get good rankings and good coverage for those videos once you've produced them. Finally, tip number 10. Uh, once you've got that video done and all of the work done with regards to the back end, make sure that you embed your video into your inventory on your website and distribute your video everywhere. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, all of the sites that take your inventory that have the ability to have video. It's important to get it out there. And then to drive, as I said, traffic back to your website from those annotations that you earlier put on those videos back to your website from those other sites um, through the editor. And that concludes my, uh, my 10 YouTube video tips. I hope that you've enjoyed it. And I will pass the floor back to JD. Well, thank you very much, Peter. That was fantastic. Uh, I don't know how you did it. Originally, you came and said, you know, I need five hours to present the material, and you were able to condense it in less than 30 minutes. So well done. Thank you very much. We took a lot out. <laughs> <laughs> so this concludes our continuing series of webinars uh, specifically designed for automotive dealers. Um, as mentioned earlier at the beginning of the presentation, we will be sending out immediately after this a, a uh, one-minute questionnaire um, to gauge, uh, to get your feedback and input. We'd really appreciate it if you could just take a moment. And it's completely anonymous, so everything is kept confidential as well. Uh, from all of us here, Autonet Dealer Solutions, a division of some media, thank you very much and have a fantastic day and good selling. Thank you.